name is Aaron Bjork. I am the lead shepherd and elder of Fellowship of the Cross, a home church modeled Pentecostal church based in Jamestown, New York. Um, Three Blind Mice, what is this program? Well, if you've been watching for a while, I take a nursery rhyme or a popular song, something from pop culture, break it down and kind of apply it to something that has to do with scripture, something that has to do with our faith. And today it's Knickknack Paddywhack. You've heard this probably growing up, you know, one of those strange nursery rhymes. Uh, um, this old man, he played one, he played knickknack on my thumb with a knickknack paddywhack, give the dog a bone, this old man came rolling home. And it goes all the way up to 10, and there's different things that the old man does uh, with the person that's singing the song, and then they give the dog a bone. Uh, what is this all about? Um, and we've talked about in different uh, 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 different uh, episodes, different installments, how nursery rhymes many times are used uh, as kind of like socio-political commentary uh, to talk about something that is uh, too sensitive in culture to mention just right out. So we create a little nursery rhyme or we write a song or a poem or something about it. So we address something uh, in culture and we teach it to the kids uh, so they learn it. Uh, and then through time, they it's either subconsciously uh, absorbed or else it's taught later. That's really the case with knick-knack paddywhack. Uh, a lot of folks might not realize this, but it really uh, comes from the Great Famine that happened in Ireland between 1846 and 1853. And, and the things that they did to the impoverished in the land uh, are referenced by knick-knack paddywhack, uh, give the dog a bone. They wouldn't give the dogs a meat or any type of food. They just give them bones. They were mistreated the poor. Uh, knick-knack paddywhack, he played knick-knack on my spine, which is a type of whipping on the spine. Uh, and this man came rolling home. In other words, the, the rich person, the person that had been there, they took all the spoils of what was left and the poor people suffered. We see this theme happening all throughout the history. And Jesus even said, the poor will always be with you. But why do I choose this? I, I didn't choose this for some type of social justice type of thing or whatever. I, I, I specifically want to get back to scripture. And we just recently came out of a Jewish holiday, which is really, we shouldn't even call it that. It should be, it should be a, a Christian, Judeo-Christian holiday. Uh, the holiday of atonement. We had Rosh Hashanah, the, the festival of Yom Teruah, the blowing of the trumpets, uh, and then it leads into atonement. And what was atonement? It was when the sinfulness of the nation of Israel and all the sojourners that were with her, foreigners, okay, their sins were covered. How were they covered? Uh, they were covered not because of things they had done. They were covered by the work of the high priest and the forgiveness of God the Father accepting the sacrifice. And the sacrifice, there was two goats and there was one ram. Uh, we, it was chosen a ram because the ram was caught in the thicket. I will provide the sacrifice. Instead of Isaac, the ram was taken in the thorns. And so then Jesus in that same place, the crown of thorns, all that stuff. But then two goats. Je Jesus separates the sheep from the goats or the, go and the goats on the right and the goats on the left, that kind of thing. One goat is sent out into the wilderness to Azazel, one of the many fallen angels from Mount Hermon in Genesis chapter 6. And the other is then sacrificed on the altar. And all the sins of the nation of Israel, Israelites and foreigners, were imputed on these sacrifices and covered and they were atoned for it was uh, like justified it was the, they had not sinned the people did not do this now you say though there are other sacrifices that's very true that's what i get to there were five sacrifices commanded the ordinances that were given in the book of leviticus for the people uh to participate in throughout the year these were perpetual three of them were voluntary two of them were commanded that they needed it to do we've heard these before and maybe as christians you're confused about what these were let me clarify it for you there was the burnt offering, there was the grain offering, there was the peace offering, there was the sin offering, and there was the guilt offering. Now, sometimes they have other names for it, but I, I'm just going to very briefly tell you this and then tie it into this nursery rhyme and where I want to go. The, these sacrifices were done by the people. Like I said, the burnt offering and the sin offering, those things were required. The other ones were voluntary. And it was about, it had, but here's the thing, it had nothing to do with conscious realization and a desire to get forgiveness of specific behavior. These sacrifices were acknowledgement of shortcoming, acknowledgement of condition acknowledgement of a tendency to gravitate to a certain type of behavior. 
In other words, it was recognizing the, the born into sinful condition that we are and we fall short of God's perfection. And so we can't pay it back because to match God's perfection would require infinite payment. And so we come up with something else. God sees our desire for forgiveness and he accepts that in its place. And if we're doing these things throughout the year, impoverished in the spirit, our Heavenly Father, unlike Nick Nick Paddywhack, the old man who just goes home and gets what he wants, our Heavenly Father then at atonement forgives us of our sins. It's not like this false system in this nursery rhyme where we just control things and beat the poor to death. Jesus said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, what do I make reference to? Did you know that the law came on Mount Sinai at Pentecost? Every single one of the Old Testament festivals, all right, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, pe uh, Pentecost, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, tabernacles, and then uh, bef just before that, the festival that we just came out of, atonement. Every single one of these things is fulfilled in Jesus and then fulfilled in the church. The first four have already been fulfilled literally by Jesus. The church is fulfilling them as we go through things. The last three still will be. But the point is Pentecost was fulfilled by Jesus. How? The Holy Spirit fell on Pentecost and a new law was given. Not that the old was done away with. It was fully explained by the power of the Holy Spirit in light of what Jesus had done. And we are given five new sacrifices to participate in through the law of the Holy Spirit. Maybe some of you have never heard of this before, but it is a paramount understanding in Ephesians chapter 4. Paul says, I have given, God has given us through the Holy Spirit. We were unity in the Spirit. Spirit came at Pentecost. The law of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit is the law of the Spirit. And then after that come the offices and the gifts. Five. He gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as shepherds, and some as teachers. Until for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the statute which belongs to the fullness, even Christ. Paul gave a very, very quick, brief summation of the fulfillment of the entire Old Testament sacrificial system in those verses. And the church just doesn't see it. Maybe you're watching this and you're just kind of like, get into your word. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. You're just pulling that out of, out of nowhere. No, I'm not. There's a reason why it was five and five. Look at what these numbers mean. And this comes right out of Pentecost, right after Pentecost, right? It, the, the church was learning the things of the Spirit and moving in those things, just as the nation of Israel in the 40 years was learning and moving in things that they had received at Mount Sinai. It's no different. My prayer is, is that we won't be like the impoverished in that poem, Nick Nack Paddywhack, this old man. My prayer is that we won't be like the old man. My prayer is that we'll be the way God wants us to be. They were poor, those Irish folks, during that famine. But God says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Translation, from a Pentecostal believer. This is what it means. I'm not going to dance around it. Blessed are those who are weak in spiritual things, in walking in the spirit, in understanding things in the spirit, in believing in the power of the Holy Spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? Going to heaven? No. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is the powers and gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's the fruits of the Spirit, which leads to the power of the Spirit, which leads to the gift of the Spirit. So if you don't believe, if you're struggling with this, if you have a difficult time believing in, in miracles today or that, that, that there's still apostles and prophets and all that stuff, take courage. More than likely, when the Spirit falls in the last day's revival, he's coming to you first. And you'll be doing the ministering and helping and taking care of those who have believed all along. Thank you for watching. I hope this was an encouragement to you in light of us coming out of atonement as we look forward to tabernacling with God as he comes again, hopefully for his body. Let us be submitting to the power of the Holy Spirit and walking in the new voluntary sacrifices 
of walking in the Spirit because we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God as we walk, being His temple now, our bodies, minds, and hearts. Thank you, folks, for watching. Be blessed and be a blessing.